Thanks everybody for joining. This is Jay Bombard, Chairman of the uh, Historic District Commission. Uh, I will call to order the meeting of the Town of Farmington Historic District Commission for July 21st, 2020 at 4 p.m. And uh, we have four public hearings scheduled. And Jim, if you have it, I would ask you to uh, read the first public hearing notice. If you don't, I'm happy to read it as well. You better read it. Okay. So uh, notice is hereby given that the Farmington Historic District Commission will hold an online public hearing Tuesday, July 21, 2020 at 4 p.m. on the following application. William Nagler, application for temporary certificate of appropriateness to install new gutter on western portion of south side of home at 35 Colton Street. So, uh, Mr. Nagler, if you can uh, make a presentation about what it is that you were uh, asking for a certificate of appropriateness for, um, I would appreciate it. And then when you're done, we'll go through and if there's any questions from the commission, we'll ask you questions. Uh, and then we'll ask if there's any from, from the public that wants to comment, and then hopefully we can uh, move your application uh, one way or the other. So if you could give your name and address for the record, please. All right, uh, you can all hear me? I yes. Assume? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I'm uh, uh, William Nagler, 35 Colton Street in uh, Farmington. And um, what uh, I'm proposing what we're proposing is to add a gutter on um, the um, western half of the southern side of the house. Uh, there's there's never been a gutter there before. It's a, it's about uh, 27 feet long. The um, area where you want to add the gutter. It's um, the south side of the original structure that was built in 1918 and then um, beyond uh, in the more northern half, or excuse me, the more eastern half of the south side is the addition that was put on, I think, in uh, 1991. But anyway, so um, that's, uh, that's what we're looking to do. We uh, want to add the gutter uh, which would um, match um, some of the gutters that are on the other side of the house on, on the north side of the house. They'd also be white, they'd, they'd be the same casement design as uh, some of the gutters on the other side and would um, protect the two big picture windows which jut out and are just two inches short of the roof line from uh, the rain and they would also, uh, the, the gutter would also uh, uh, help reduce the amount of uh, uh, rain that comes in to the south side of the basement uh, occasionally when we get a very heavy rain. So anyway, that's the uh, plan. Okay, um, and commissioners as usual, I know it's a little hard because we're not in person. I will go through and call everybody if you have something to add afterwards that you think of, uh, you can either raise your hand through the system or just interrupt me. But I'm gonna go through, and again, no particular order, see if anybody has any questions. Um, Jim Calciano. Uh, no questions, looks okay to me. Ted Sanford. No questions. Dorothy. No, I'm looking at the picture, it looks fine. Jay. Nothing, fine with me. Okay, again, I don't either. I heard you say it's going to match what's on the house, so mm -hmm. obviously that makes sense. Um, can I get a motion from somebody to approve uh, this application? Can I double check that there aren't any questions from the phone? I'm sorry, thank you. Is there anybody um, who's on the phone uh, that would like to ask a question? If so, can you raise your hand, uh, I guess, through the system, right, uh, Correct. Shannon? Correct. Yep, you'd have to raise your hand electronically, and then I can unmute you. I think we mostly have high school students on for their government and law class. Good. So I think we're all set. I'm not seeing Okay, hearing, hearing no comment from the public, uh, can I get a motion on this application? Um, move that we approve this application for Mr. Nagler at the address stated. Second, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dorothy. Any further discussion on the motion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any opposed? 
Hearing none. Any abstentions? Hearing none. Thank you. You're all set, Mr. Nagler. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, moving right along the uh, second public hearing uh, I will read out now. Uh, it's Elizabeth L. Wild application for temporary certificate of appropriateness for Colton Street facing facade changes to include the addition of a standing seam aluminum clad pent roof over garage doors with recess lights, small roof over front door, new cornice and freeze boards, replace windows, remove shutters, add light fixture and replace wood panel door at 13 Colton Street. Uh, and I believe Hillary Donald is here to present that. Yeah. Hillary, if you yes, want to do the I, usual, if you can do the usual name and address, thanks. Oh yes, okay, my name is Hillary Donald. I'm of Lark Architects. I live at 14 Colton Street and I am representing Elizabeth Wild for this application. And I will tell you, there's one thing in the announcement that's a little off. Um, we're only adding a roof over the garage doors, as this drawing indicates. So the, the piece that mentioned the front door, so the main gable piece that you see that on the right, which has a door and two windows, and that piece above the door and the windows is is just a it's really just trim it's not a it's not a roof or anything like that we're just so what the what we're trying to attempt here is to dress up that part of the house a little bit so currently the front door is um it's a wood door it's a four panel door so we'd like to have replace that with another wood door that matches it in size and it, number of panels it's just it's got cracks in it you can actually see the light through it so it needs to be replaced um and the we're creating a little panel between the door and the window to its left where we show a lantern okay. to kind of pull that all together the the facade is, is a little bit odd because it's not symmetrical and the hope was to with creating this freeze on top of the door and the two windows was to sort of pull it all together and give it a little more finished appearance. Um, the other thing that we're doing is adding um, a, I'm trying to read it on your screen, it's a basically a cornice line, so separating the, the gable, the triangle shape, with um, a, a, a one by eight board and then we have a little trim component on the top of that so it just is delineating this this facade a little bit more and then also that top gable window we are changing the size right now it's a kind of a see the dash lines it's a little bit skinnier and it's just unattractive in general so we're just putting in a window that seems to fit more um, so these windows would uh, certainly be, they would be matching what's there. They're clad wood, aluminum clad wood with simulated divided light. Um, the siding is going to stay. Right now there, there's no one plan to change it. It'll all be painted and hopefully just look cleaned up. So, I mean, that's, so that's the extent of the work on that facade, I may not have mentioned everything. Um, we're adding that, a, a light fixture, that's, I call it a lantern, but it's, right now there's a, a tiny little fixture there and it doesn't really seem to fit. Um, and so then the other component to this project, and as you look at this house, the original house was what I was just discussing, that, just that main gable piece. The rest was all built in the 90s. And um, so, I, I, the idea with this roof over the garage doors is to break up that massive wall. It's um, it's just quite big, and it it needs it needs something. So this is purely a decorative element. And I sent a photograph over earlier to Sandy of of a similar type of roof. So basically, that's that's basically what we're doing. We're adding a, a little pent roof. We're not we're using a 
an aluminum roof on it just because it seems like it's a, it's unique. It doesn't need to be asphalt shingles. Um, and it'll have some brackets to hold it up. Um, so that's that photo, it, it's, it's around the corner in the neighborhood. Um, so that's basically what we're doing. Are there any questions? So before I ask the commissioners, uh, just real quick for me, I'll point out to everybody, if you, the materials that Sandy sent to us by email, uh, there were some JPEG photos. And if you look at those, they're perfect before, so you can really get a sense of what they're doing because I was a little bit confused, but you can you can really see the uh, which boards they're adding in that thing. So if anybody is trying to figure that out, uh, I suggest you try it. Yeah, those are good pictures. Um, okay, so again, not in any particular order. Uh, I guess I'll go the opposite way. So Jay, do you have any questions or comments uh, for the applicant? Um, the question I have is about the windows um, where the main door is. There's four windows that are all the same size. And then the window on top, is that going to look like the other windows? Um, well, it's uh, aside from the, the shape, it's the same type of window. It would be a double pane simulated divided light. Okay. Odd window, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to let other commissioners go. I'm a little confused over the garage, what that's going to look like. From that picture that you showed, um, can we... So that's the, that's, uh, the neighboring house, so it's just going to be a little roof oh. over top. Okay, so that's what it. Basically, this, this roof piece, and Hillary, please correct me if I'm wrong, but it's this roof piece that is getting added something similar. It's that idea yeah. of getting added on the other house. Yes, that's that's a, a very similar to what we're proposing. Okay, um, I'm Jay, happy to come back to you if you come up with something else. Uh, Dorothy, do you have anything? Um, well, I have two machines going here, so I'm looking, flipping back and forth all of these pictures on my iPad, and the changes <laughs> are stunning, actually. I think I think that it's gonna make a huge difference. And no, I think it's all gonna look wonderful. So no, I don't have a question. Okay, thank you. Uh, Ted? Um, my only question, or actually two questions. Uh, the brackets, do you know what those are gonna look like? Um, you did catch me there. I just showed a front elevation. So um, I would, um, what they're going to look like they're probably going to be made up of three pieces so there'll be a, a vertical piece a horizontal piece that runs underneath the roof and then an angle piece to, so it like open brackets like i think you not not like the photo that we see with a solid bracket that's a it would it would be made up of i'm sorry i didn't draw a little side view um but it's made up of probably four by, mm, so four by material posts, I'm thinking. So you, are you, do you understand what I'm saying? Or? Yeah, I, I think so. Fairly simple bracket with a, a part that's gonna go along the roof, one along the, the siding and then an angle. Yes, yeah, very, very simple. Yeah, okay. Like that. Um, I like the idea of the, the metal roof to break up that big expanse above mm -hmm. the garage doors up to the windows. I think that's, that's going to be an improvement. Um, I noticed the drawings don't show shutters anymore. I'm not going to put the oh, shutters. Oh, I, I did forget to say that. So we're taking the shutters off. Now the shutters that are on are plastic. Um, they're just mm -hmm. nailed onto the siding. They're, there's nothing special about them, so we thought it would look cleaner without them. And so, yes, I, that was another component that we're doing. Okay, uh, I have, I had noticed that they're not original shutters, and and uh, <laughs> I think it's going to look better without them too. So, well, I'm hoping that's the case. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, that was all I had. Thanks, Ted. Jim? Yeah, can we go back to the sketch? There we go. Right. Um, yeah, I think it's a vast improvement, and uh, I learned what a pent roof now is. <laughs> I always remember what they called them. Um, I do like the, uh, the um, uh, it's not so, or I guess you're, you're making a full pediment, correct? Is that what's happening? Because you're using that freeze board? Yes, yes, we're creating a, that, the pediment, yes, exactly. Okay. Right, yeah, no, I think it really dresses up that house a, a lot. Um, and I think it's as clever as you can get because everything is off center in the front of that house. Yes, it would be much more involved to move the windows around. So <laughs> it's so, kind of quirky uh, that way. That's what's kind of interesting. Yeah, it is. I, I like I like everything. I, I think it's appropriate. We the standing metal seam roof is good. We've used uh, a lot of that to happen. So I'm I'm good with everything for that. Okay, uh, Hillary, just a couple of things. One. Uh, it's really hard to tell, but from the original photo to your sketch, is the is the window in the attic going to be, or the third floor, is that going to be smaller than the one that's currently there? Yeah, the one that's there, I don't know if you could see, there's a faint dash line. It's it's basically taller. It's, a, it's about mm -hmm. the same width, but it'll be shorter. We're just making it so it's not so close to the trim of mm -hmm. the of the room. Oh, so it's it's for aesthetics that you're doing that, or is it just yeah, as a... it's cheaper? aesthetic, yes. It's... Okay. And then, um, what's the board going to be that the um, lantern is attached to? Or is it just a, what is it'll it? Be a, it'll be a panel, and if, if it's made out of either an MDO or wood, um, so it'll just, it'll, it'll be painted white to match everything, so... When I say MDO, it's just a more stable material that doesn't shrink and change. So it'll um, just be it'll just be a rectangular be, board. Yeah, yes, exactly. Right. A, with a maybe a, a border, like a uh, cabinet door. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, is there anybody who is listening in to our call or, or viewing? who would like to uh, ask a question or make a comment? If so, could you please uh, raise your hand and Shannon will try to let you in. Yeah, I'm not okay. saying anything, Jay. I think okay. uh, Let me just one more time around to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Was Jay or anybody else, was there any final thoughts hearing every, everybody else make their comments? I think it's going to look great. I'm fine with everything. Okay. Uh, Thank if, you. Good. If not, uh, do I have a motion to approve this application? Yes. Um, I move that we grant a temporary certificate of appropriateness um, for the renovations at 13 Colton Street as presented by Hillary Donald. Thank you. Is there a second? I second it. Thank you, Ted. Uh, further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, great. All set. Thank you, Hillary. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, the next public hearing. Miss Porter School, application for temporary certificate of appropriateness to replace windows and shutters at the Colgate Wellness Center at 44 Main Street. And uh, Katie Bradley is here to present. And Katie is usually name and uh, address, please. Hi. Um, hello, everybody. I'm Katie Bradley. I'm here today representing Miss Porter School. And um, we would like to replace the missing and mismatched shutters that were on this building before I took them down for painting uh, with new cedar shutters. Um, that have the pull rod that match some of the original shutters that were on the building. But um, this building, I don't know if anyone had noticed recently, had broken shutters and plastic shutters. And I'm not sure how they got there because I didn't put them there. But um, we'd just like to put 
all the right size shutters back, they will be wood and they will have um, the push rod on it. So that's the shutters and the windows um, we would like to replace with an aluminum clad um, two over two uh, simulated divided light. Uh, the windows are made by Lincoln. You have approved those for other buildings on campus. Um, now, the one request that we have that really changes the look is that the front of the building, the original portion of the building, um, had two over two um, uh, windows. And the rear of the building, and we believe, I've read it a couple of different places, so it's sometime in the 40s or the 50s, they put an addition on the back of this building. And I think you can see it here. It's after the roof changes, to the two, yeah, that's the, those windows in the back are eight over eight. And what we would like to do is to, there are 11 windows on the rear addition, and we would like to change those also, replace those with two over two to match um, the original windows in the front portion of the building. And uh, the original muttons are seven eighths of an inch, and the Lincoln window Simulated divided light has a seventh eighth mutton that will match. And uh, as you know, with nice new windows, we can get rid of the um, unattractive aluminum storms that are on the building. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, Jim? Uh, no, um, I you know, go by there a lot. A lot of work being done everywhere on that campus. So glad to see um, the windows will look will be a, an asset. I think having them all uh, uniform and uh, the two over two um, are are fine with me. Okay, thanks, Ted. Um, no, I no comments. I, other than I, I think it'll be an improvement, and uh, I'm fine with it. Okay, Dorothy. I agree. I'm fine as well. And Jay? I agree also. Okay. This seems too easy. I wish I had a question to stump you with, but I don't. Uh, um, you'll, have, you'll have some hard, hard questions for me. On okay. That. I'll save them for the next one. Um, is there anybody who is listening in who would like to ask a question or make a comment on this application? If so, please raise your hand and Shannon will let you join. No, all clear. Seeing none, uh, do I have a motion to approve this application? I'll make the motion uh, to grant a temporary certificate of appropriateness to Ms. Porter's school to replace the windows and shutters uh, at 44 Main Street. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Dorothy. Do I have any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. That's all set. Thank you. And we'll move to the next application. Do you need me to introduce myself again? Uh, I just got to read this. Hold on a second. Then, uh, sure. Uh, hang on. Miss Porter's school application for temporary certificate of appropriateness for a 61 foot, <laughs> six inches by 14 foot addition to the dance barn on Porter Road. Something doesn't sound right there. It's 61, 61 and a half feet. Oh, that's what it is. Okay. That makes more sense. Uh, to the dance barn on Porter Road. And so, uh, yeah, if you could, Katie, in case someone's trying to find the tape someday, just uh, say your name again and who you represent. Yes. Um my name is Katie Bradley. Um, I'm here today representing Miss Porter's school and our request to put an addition on the north side of the dance barn at 3 Porter Road, which I always thought it was 48A Main Street, but Mike Galino has filed it with the fire department as 3 Porter. So now we are- That um, must be it. That, that, that sounds like it. a safe address to have. So we're now, it's 3 Porter Road. Okay. Um, and as you can see by some of the photos, this is the existing photo. Um, most of the mess there is from the 
um, driveway that we've been working on. Um, Shannon, can you, yes. And there, the white building is the dance barn. This is, of course, an aerial view. And the, um, the shed portion where the arrow is running is the addition that we're referring to. Could you go one more? There you go. There's the measurements. Um, the addition will not take over any of the parking lot. It will just, um, it, so the, the parking really won't change. There will just be some minor improvements in the parking, but I'll get to that. So this is the view that you'll see from Porter Road. Um, we are going to use the same size and style clapper. Um, the Aluminum storefront system is on your left where the arrow is. That is an aluminum clad um, window um, that will kind of announce the entrance to the building. On the uh, east side of that section um, is the door. Um, along the top under the eave, uh, under the roof line, those are windows as well that will let light into our new restrooms um, and dressing room. And then the far corner on the right, that is a trellis system that is made with um, a wood cedar grid and it's going to be over um, a just kind of a solid panel to mimic the storm front system on the, uh, the storefront system on the other side. Um, it will just be a lattice work. And uh, other than that, the, um, the roof will be the same um, timberline architectural shingles in charcoal that we just put on the building. And um, so that's the, the view from Porter Road. If you go down, this is the new addition as you're facing it from Main Street. Um, it's a new door that will go into a little uh, lobby with uh, coat racks. And um, the reason that we, um, started working on this project is this dance barn has had um, no restrooms or dressing rooms, which over the years the kids have been really good sports about it, but it, it has become complicated and they have to run to the gym to go to the bathroom or fill a water bottle and uh, they, they have to um, kind of change clothes when the lights are off and they hide behind a panel in order to do that and it just we're very fortunate our trustees are um, supportive of this project at this time and willing to pay for it so um, we're hoping we get approval to do it so we'll keep strolling down and I can show you the changes in the parking basically we'll keep the same number of parking spots on the dance barn side of that lot but we're going to shift a peninsula over so that um, when you're in that new aluminum storefront entrance with all the glass, it looks out onto a landscaped area as opposed to looking out on parked cars. Um, and then we're going to move that ADA parking to where Shannon is circling right now. And that is all going to be regraded so that there will be very easy access um, for wheelchairs and we're regrading the ramp right now there's three steps going up into the entrance um, of the dance barn which of course makes it impossible for anyone in a wheelchair so this will be regraded so that there's just one continuous walk that goes into the front door and then the landscaping will be integrated in the landscaping the, um, we will bring the soil and landscape up to that walk so it doesn't look like a ramp um, Let's see what else. Um, this is the part that is going to be challenging. Um, I, and I have a picture and we have some options, but I don't know why all my options didn't show up. But one of the things that we want to do in this renovation, um, in addition to the um, addition for the bathrooms and the dressing rooms and storage is to um, add some AC to improve our heating system and add air conditioning. And we have looked at everything that we possibly can think of from roof units on that new addition roof, which looked awful. Um, then they talked about hiding them and everything they did to hide the roof units made it look even worse. Um, so the solution at this point in time um, is, and I don't know if you can, make that larger, Shannon? Um, I, sorry, let me see. 
Well, and actually we could go to the picture with the, um, the side of the barn, maybe. Oh yeah. So basically what they want to do already. So this is the original side there. That is the original chimney. And we were hoping maybe we could do a chimney on the other side that you see from the parking lot essentially. And, um, that would, you know, we need a chase basically to get, um, there would be a compressor and the chase then would run up this enclosure. There you go. That's in the draw, the, the rendering. Uh, okay. Yeah, try it. Okay. okay. Where do you want to the rendering? Stop. Stop. stop there. So there's stop. one. So stop right there. So basically, is it sideways for you all too? It is. Oh, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out. I'm okay. sorry. Oh. Okay, right well, I can so, only rotate it one direction, so bear with me, folks. Sorry. No, oh, you're good, Jim. That was good. <laughs> so basically, we have to put a compressor in, as you all know, when you do a, um, and behind at the far corner where the arrow is, there is about a five foot drop with a retaining wall that's currently there. And the plan is, is to, and you can't see this from Main Street and you cannot see it from Porter Road. But to, to enlarge that opening where that retaining wall is and drop the condenser down in there. But however, the condenser has to run into this ductwork that has to go up the side of the building. And so the architect suggested either a, a faux chimney or, a, or just wrap it in the clapboards or, um, and I, it all seemed like a really great idea until I looked at the dimensions. And then the dimensions are four feet by 12 feet. That's a really big chimney. That's like way bigger. So then when we got to that, I was, I was just like, wait a second, that's not a chimney. That's the chimney on the other side I measured is 15 inches by four feet. So this is essentially three times the size. Um, the architect is still contending that it's not gonna be that big of a deal, but then he gave the other option, if you go to the next page, oh, there it is, of just enclosing it in the same um, material. And I said, well, I don't really like that at all. And then he recommended, because technically they only have to go a couple of feet higher than the um, freesia board, the white board, um, to put just a, sh to not make it a chimney, because that's just unnecessary. It, he thought that it was a good look. But if you stop there and put a shed roof on it, that's as much that's the height they need to get the duct work into the ceiling of the dance barn. So I'm basically asking you all to give me your opinions and your ideas on the best way. It, that um, chase, which is what we're gonna have to call it and not a chimney because it's way too big, is three feet, seven inches by 12. They were trying to work on ways to minimize the size of the ducts, but at this point in time, that's what they're going to need, and it has to do with f fresh air, makeup, and intake, and then what they end up having to put into the dance barn. Um, so, question: Is there um, is there a rendering of that third option with the shed roof? I thought I had included it and I don't see it there and it's not even in my, um, I, I was hoping I had it right here. Yeah. Basically, I don't know where it is. This world of high tech and everything being on computers, I'm, I have to say, I think I've got some COVID-19 brain going on. I thought I had included it and basically it just, just imagine this but right above the white freesia line, it angles down and it would be at the same pitch as the pitch on the new addition roof. Um, on that new email that we got that I'm searching for, there were three options. Yeah. I yeah. thought Sandy, there was. Sandy sent oh, it to us today, yeah. 
I'm trying to find it myself. Okay. And the, so the hard copy I have has two options. I'm just, I pulled our file. Yeah, so I, I thought I had sent them and then I was going through my, you know, kind uh, of. We definitely have them. I'm looking at mm -hmm. it right now. I printed it out. I'm just looking for the email. So Sandy sent an email today saying, mm -hmm. hey, here's three more views of that. Or whatever. Right. I realized yesterday that it wasn't in the package, so I sent them to her yesterday. And um, but I I can't even. I'll find it on my Maybe. computers. But can you share what you have? Can you hold up? Does anyone have it in? Uh, on a I do, but I can't. hold on. I'm... I opened it earlier, but now I can't. I know when it's like disappeared from too many emails. Hang on. Oh, I have it, but oh, I've got it. Three, yeah. Well, there was a lot more than three. It's several, but they were in there. There's a lot of paper, but yeah. the options were in there. Right. I think that the options were within some other. Yeah, I'm not. Sandy, can you let me share my screen? I think I could do this. So, yeah, let me see what I can do here, Jay. I got to change you to a co-host, I think, is how I got to do this. Or, or I could send you the email. May, yeah, except I'm not, yeah, it starts, I'm at the, I'm not at my computer, so I can't answer the email. So I'm going to make you a co-host. And then I think you have to request the screen sharing and I'll say yes, and then you should be good to go. Hmm. Oh, I've got it on my phone. I have it. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I, yeah, I have it on my phone. Uh, there, hey, you go. there it is. Got it. Very good, Jay. And, yes, and, but it doesn't, ha that's a hip roof one. And there was one that wasn't a hip roof that was just more of a shed roof. I think this hmm, shed roof looks better. Yeah, the shed roof would look much better than the hip roof. The hip roof is unattractive. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, that's right the on. inside. You don't need to see that. You don't need to see my junk. How big is the shed? Excuse me? How, how big is that area? Is that the 12 by 3? Yes, it's 12 wide. You mean the chase? It's yes. 12 wide by 3 feet 7. It comes off the building. And previously, there's a <laughs> chimney there. No, there was not a chimney there. The chimney okay. was, is on the other side and it's not in the rent. Okay. But uh, originally, it's like when they were telling me that we had to put a chase, I said, could you make it look like the chimney on the other side? So it's basically a barn with two chimneys. And they said, sure, they did it. And then after they were like, it would, took me a couple of days to realize, wait, that's not, that's, tw that's four feet by 12 feet. That's not a chimney. Just because you put brick on it doesn't make it a chimney. It looks really silly. So we went back to other options of how we can enclose the chase. And the problem is, is that on the back side of this building, we have um, a lawn area that we have events in and French doors that go out to that grassy area. Then the west side of the building is, um, is a walkway. So we don't want to put the condenser where we, we have a lot of people walking and we certainly don't want to put it in on the porter side of the building, um, which is the new front, you know, street face facing side. So that back corner makes the boat most sense, especially since there's already a retaining wall and this five foot drop that if we open that area up more, enlarge the retaining wall, we can drop the condenser down in there. So the condenser's hidden, but then we still have the the challenge of how to get the ductwork up the side of the building and and the HVAC company says that they need this kind of three to four by 12 foot wide is space. question is the mechanical room in the duct and the in the heating 
unit on the first floor and that's why it's going up? Is that where it is or is it in the basement? No, it's all going to be right. We are, um, the, it's going to be inside. Some of it's going to be inside of this and some of it's, what they've done is they're taking a rooftop unit that has the air handler and the compressor and that's going to be next to that in that recessed area. But so all of the duct work for the air intake and the exchange and blowing the cool air and the heat all has to go inside that chase. Wow, okay. And I mean, I was so exasperated a few weeks ago when the size of this thing, I said, what if we just put all of that on the, you know, keep the compressor and condenser and everything outside in that well, but just run the duct work inside. Right. Um, what was the answer to that? I mean, that well, it's all doable, but we, you know, we lose, lose space. We lose space inside. So. Mm. Um, well, let me let me go around uh, formally and let everybody comment and uh, think about this. Um, and since Jim already started, let's go back though. Now, Jay, do you have anything um, that you wanted to ask or? Uh, no, I, I I agree with Katie on that. Option one, it doesn't look attractive at all. I agree. Um, and it's hard for me to see what the difference between option two and option three is. Oh. Um, I'm on my phone. I'm looking at my phone. Yeah, option two is like a flat roof, if you will, and then option oh, maybe three, I'm the wrong it thing. angles it. It's kind of like what we just saw with... Uh, Hillary's thing, you know, it's, it's, a, a, it's a slanted roof. Oh, I it's see. The shed roof yes. versus a hip roof. Okay, and Thank that's you. option three is the shed roof, correct? Yes. Or no? Okay, yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to listen to hear what everybody else has to say, but I don't like the first option, that's for sure. Dorothy? Um, yeah, the, the shed, the one with the shed roof is obviously the least obtrusive. Mm -hmm. um, I do like the idea of the brick. Is it possible to do the a short, you know, break the brick off where you where the shed part is? Yeah. Is it possible to do that? Well, I think we could. I just don't know if that would draw the brick concerns me when I saw that it was four feet by twelve feet, because then it really draws attention to it. So it's Whereas, like um if it's just here, it's very noticeable because um, it's, I don't know, if it was all the same material as the material of the building with a small shed roof on the top of it, I think when you see it in person, it would blend in much more than brick. I, I, worry, I, I thought brick was a great idea if it was chimney size, but mm. with the 12 by 4, four feet um, dimension, it just seems like it might be too much brick. But if well, you all think that the brick with the shed roof would look best, that is what we will do. Well, I think that the option three with the shed roof is, is very obviously the least obtrusive. It shows, mm -hmm. um, it hurts the facade the least, I guess. Well, and I know that we're not supposed to take into consideration um, landscaping, but currently, right now, not in this picture, but in real life, there is a huge sycamore tree right there. So, I mean, that that is there. It's not going anywhere, at least for, you know, years until it expires or hit, gets hit by lightning or something, but there is a very large sycamore tree right at the front entrance of this building. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, Ted, what are your thoughts? Um, I, I agree. I think the option three is, is probably the better one to go with. Um, mm -hmm. th the brick is going to be, it's not going to look like a chimney. Um, I like the lattice work. I think that's going to uh, dress up that front part so it doesn't look like a storefront. Uh, and it it somewhat mimics what's in the gym beyond it and, and the glass along the top of that building. 
Um, that's my only comments. Thank you, Jim. Um, yes, one thing, definitely option three. Um, one thing uh, to, one. Uh, that's a full pediment on that end of the building, isn't it? The, the gable roof, the end? Yes, okay. yes. Um, how, maybe think about mm. on that shed roof, having a slight overhang on it and duplicating the crown holdings. That might soften up that. It, it may not look good, but I'm just saying as a possibility. Um, if you make that shed roof have a bigger overhang, <clears throat> then duplicate some of the crown molding that you already have on the building. That may help that a little bit. So if, wrap that trim around. Mm -hmm. Right. Just think about that. Okay. You know, all right. Um, and as far as the uh, rest of the building, I like, like what you're doing with the, the, the entrance. Right? When I first saw it, I think you said entrance, but where's the entrance? It was on the on the side, um, so now the you're saying um, vinyl clad aluminum or what 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 are all those little squares they're going to be? That's, that's it says it's, a, it's an aluminum. It's spec is aluminum. Uh, it's, so it's a wrapped. Um, wood. It is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll it's not good. vinyl. Okay. No other questions. Well, Dorothy, did you have something else you wanted to add? No, no, I'm good, thank you. So I will say I um, did open Sandy's email earlier and was able to go through them. I had a minute to go through them and I was decided I, I would decide which option looked best to me. I, I, I kind of liked option two, to be honest with you, but I'm not gonna, if the, if the preference is for three, I'm fine with that. I just thought that um, well, first of all, the, I, I do agree the chimney doesn't make sense. I'm not a big fan of sort of fake ornamentation anyway, although I do recognize because of we're in the district, sometimes it makes sense. But um, so I, I didn't think that the one made sense. I, you know, you're going to have, so you're going to have architectural shingles on that sloping on the roof. On the new addition? Yeah, for, no, for option three on that, uh, on your, yeah, you're going to put. On the shed roof? That, yeah. I mean, that's the thought. I mean, but we could put aluminum if you want. I don't know. It's, I mean, I just think it might look a little goofy. But again, I'm not. I because guess it's so it. small. You think because yeah. it's small, so maybe a nice um, standing seam detail would be nice. Like at, on Lisa Wild's new garage, <clears throat> that would that actually would look nice. Yeah, I like that idea. Myself. Okay. So like the option three shed roof, but a standing seam. Cup, uh, roof, yeah. Yes, uh-huh. I like that. Okay. I, I will say also, I'll add in uh, for the benefit of the commission for whatever value it has. I did drive by there today because I have to say, having lived, and I know you, we all do too, you all do, within the village, I just never really noticed that building from Porter Road. And I kind of still don't. I will say, congrats, you had the paving done. It's uh, very nice up there. Um, and so you don't really see it. And I, and I don't think you're really going to tremendously see this, but I do appreciate the effort of the school to make that uh, addition look attractive, <clears throat> as well as being open to trying to find a reasonable solution for the, uh, the chase cover, whatever we're calling that. Um, but I, I don't, I'm not terribly concerned it's going to be a big distraction to anybody in the village, fortunately. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess uh, I'm fine with this. Uh, I guess my preference would be we're going to go with three to uh, put the, uh, I forget the right term of art, the seamless uh, metal roof on it. Um, is there anybody uh, on the call that would like to comment on this or ask questions? It is a kind of fun and unique uh, application. Nobody? Second. Okay. No, no hands raised. Uh, in that case, uh, does someone want to make a motion and keeping in mind whether you want to make the uh, roof part of the motion? Uh, probably like to make the motion <clears throat> to uh, grant a temporary certificate of appropriateness for uh, three Porter Road, uh, the Gaines Dance Barn, uh, as submitted. Um, using option three for the chase 
uh, on the that's the easterly side. Right, right. I think. Yeah. And yeah. Um, having the shed roof uh, with uh, a standing um, metal seam uh, roof um, and everything else as as presented. Thank you. Is there a second? I second. Um, and for further discussion, I'll just say, um, Katie, if, if you go to the architects or somebody who supposedly maybe knows more than I do, certainly, which isn't that hard to find, and they say it's just not going to look right, you know, I've come back and we're open to that. But, uh, uh, you know, it does seem like a good idea at the moment. But obviously, if, if someone tells you it's really not going to look right, come back. Well, these, um, these were the architect's ideas. And I was just like, what? You know, I was fine when we were calling it a chimney because I'm thinking chimney. But then right. I looked at the drawing and I saw four feet by 12 feet. Yeah. That's I mean, when I, when I saw the house. application the first time and I looked and I, it's funny because the drawing we're looking at now, for instance, you don't see the other chimney. And I kept getting confused, like, well, wait, are you getting rid of the other chimney and all those windows? Yeah, same here. So it got very confusing. And then I finally realized, no, no, okay, they're going to add this. And then I agree, it just, it didn't, it doesn't look and right. And they so. didn't put the chimney in this rendering that's existing. Right. And that's what right. I was trying to that, do. That's what's confusing, right. I'm sorry, yes. That's okay. You know, they, you saved a few dollars there. They didn't draw the chimney. Um, <laughs> All right, so that's my extra two cents. Does anybody else any further discussion? Okay, uh, hearing none, we have a motion. We have a second. Uh, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, you're all set. Thank you, Katie. Thank you all very, very much. I hope we're all in person again soon. I don't know if that will be possible, but... It's easy. Nice idea. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks, All right. Okay, uh, guys, I still have some more business here. Um, and anybody's welcome to stay, by the way. This is open meeting. Uh, so the why don't we go to the approval of the minutes to get that out of the way. Um, there were the May 19 minutes, as usual. Sandy does a tremendous job and sends them out very quickly. And if you have any nits, she'll correct them right then. I, I'm fine with them. I don't know if anybody else um, has any comments on them or any suggestion changes. Uh, hearing none, can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I'll move. I'll make... Second. I've got a motion and a second. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. <laughs> Um, all right, um, other business, uh, I guess maybe it's going to be, would be your staff report, Shannon. I don't know if you had anything, but I just had two things um, that I wanted to bring up. Um, the first one, we did get, somebody has noticed, and it's not the first time that the first church has a, a, a sign. It's a, it's a, they consider it a temporary sign, I guess. But anyway, they have a sign that goes up and down. And the in the, in the the structure to hold the sign is made out of PVC pipe, and you know obviously that's probably not conducive to the district. But at any rate, Sandy, uh, Shannon, I think I forwarded to. You. Has anybody had any discussion yet with the church or? Oh, any, we any I, I apologize because I meant to follow up. So two things. That's okay. I drove, uh, it is a temporary sign. Um, so we spoke to them and it's actually, it's Biff Seconder that we're, is the contact. So we, Bruce gave Biff a call, talked about it and he said, yeah, it's time for it to come down anyhow. It is a temporary sign. And we said, look, we get, so temporary sign falls on kind of a different umbrella, right? Um, so, but we said, you're in the historic district. Can we get a different frame to put this in? You know, we understand that there are some seasonal signs and they're only up for a couple of weeks, maybe a month at a time. But nonetheless, we get the PVCs convenient. It does what you need, but you could probably do to, um, you know, a, a black powder coated aluminum post that you could still attach the sign to and achieve the same goal with it looking a little more aesthetically pleasing. So. They're looking into it. In the meantime, the sign's been removed. I did drive by, I did confirm the sign's been removed. So um, 
uh, or at least it was a couple of days ago when I drove drove by. Uh, so we'll, I'm not sure where we're going to get with it. it. Obviously, they'll have to request another temporary signs permit the next time this comes up, and we'll see how they're going to attach it. It'd be nice well, if we could get this done ahead of time and get them to work with us, but. How long, when you get a temporary permit, how long is that good for? I, I didn't realize there was a, such a thing. Uh, it's, it's good for a couple of weeks and they are allowed to renew it. So sometimes it's it's anywhere from two to four weeks typically is what we consider temporary. Okay, all right. So uh, okay. A, a lot of the nonprofits, you know, any of the signs that you see for a nonprofit organization, are, they're permitted for that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I appreciate your uh, follow-up on that's good. Yeah, um, I apologize, I didn't get back to an email on you on that one. Oh, that's okay, but you did take care of the problem. That's all I, did problem. I, I didn't, I didn't, didn't uh, communicate. That's all right. Um, does anybody else have any question about that before I put them on? No. Okay, the other is, uh, and I should really let Shannon do the report because she should take the glory, but um, I happen to be... Uh, because I knew it was on I, the agenda, the uh, TPZ uh, was referred the um, additions to the historic district uh, and it was favorably received. But uh, Shannon, I don't know if you have a quick update on that. Sure. Yeah, I was actually, we were on the same train there. I did uh, have that in to share with everyone. So this is the expansion report. Um, and we presented this to TPZ last night so that they could give a positive referral back to your commission so you folks would be ready to hold your public hearing uh, in the fall regarding these homes. So there are five homes that are being added to the this, uh, district. This report in the map was sent to you in, uh, in the spring. Lisa Johnson, uh, our new town historian, finished the report uh, for us, I believe, with some assistance from Jay and others along the way, but uh, Lisa did the lion's share of the work on this, and it's really kind of fun to read. I hope you folks have had a chance to read it, but it's a, it's an interesting trip through our town history. So the next step, it was favorably received. We got a positive referral from TPZ last night, so it does have to go to the state for their approval. Uh, it's been sent to town council at this point as a courtesy, so they understand that it's coming before them. Uh, next steps would be once we have approval from the state would be to hold a public hearing with your commission uh, so that these can be formally introduced and all the property owners have a chance to speak and ask questions. Anyone from the public can speak and ask questions. Um, then after that public hearing, there is a ballot process that takes place through the clerk's office. Each of the homeowners actually has to vote to reaffirm their desire to have their property added to the district. Um, once that has taken place, the final step is for this to go to town council and have a public hearing with town council and ratify that ordinance to include these properties. So there's, there's timing and very systematic steps that, uh, that take place as we move through this. Um, but we're, the process is underway and you should expect to hear more in the fall and have a public hearing in the fall regarding this. That would be my anticipation. So, I mean, that, that, it really is exciting and I know it's something that it, uh, takes a lot of work. So I appreciate the town, especially with uh, limited resources, uh, seeing this through. Um, it is exciting, a couple of the properties on there. Uh, most of you probably know which ones they are. Uh, but, you know, Portia Corbett's house, of course, a uh, uh, mountain spring, uh, which is also next to or near the uh, another historical society property, which I, I believe eventually will end up in the district. I think it, the historical society is just kind of waiting to see kind of what happens with uh, with the uh, the Parsons property and all that. Um, also, you know, uh, Janice and Mark Reamer, uh, you know, came to us to put their house in the property. The other one way out on West District. And that's fantastic too. And they, if you know them and know the house, they painstakingly restored that as a, an example of 18th century uh, architecture. And it's just gorgeous um, and nice of them to do that. Uh, the schoolhouse, we're working on even more history there, but that really is an amazing building. I think we all know it, we go by it. Um, it's, it's aesthetically pleasing, but also 
uh, historically important, not only because of the schoolhouse, but, um, and it is referred to in the, uh, in the paperwork that uh, Lisa put together, there was a, um, one of its residents, and we believe owners, I'm working on really tightening that up, but was a uh, enslaved person who uh, came back from the South during the Civil War with a regiment out of Unionville. Um, so he came up to uh, Connecticut and then he joined the uh, 29th Volunteers, which was known as the Colored Volunteers, and was in one of the first uh, African American regiments and actually fought in the war, went down to Petersburg, uh, was injured, actually ended up eventually with an invalid's pension. Um, but he lived in the house uh, for uh, in the building. It wasn't a great building, apparently. He only lived there about a year, um, but did live there with his family for a little while. So um, there's an awful lot of just fascinating history. Some of it's well told, some of it not so well told. So hopefully we'll tell more of that as it goes on. But again, um, all the owners of these properties, it's very generous to do that. I, I you know, would appreciate the efforts of everybody know these people to talk to them we should always continue this it will be a slow process i suspect we won't have any put in for a while after this but you know the more we can expand this the more uh, we can preserve what we find so important to farmington both historically and aesthetically so uh, again thanks and thanks to the town thanks shannon you're welcome like i said lisa does the lion's share of the work thank goodness uh doing this resource is fun but it's uh it's tedious yeah. It's it tedious pain, to do takes the a lot of time. It does, yeah. Do yeah. you have anything else that uh, you wanted to comment I on? I don't. I think that's it for right now. Okay. Does anybody, any commissioners have anything they want to bring up? Or? No. 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 Okay. Well, thanks, everybody, for uh, joining. And uh, no meeting in August, and we'll see you in September. Okay. So have a great uh, rest of your summer vacation. There's a song about that, but I won't sing it. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Thank you. Right, thanks, thanks, everybody. everybody. Bye. Bye. -bye.